Now, is where I have to get the clown uh, outfit out because we're going to talk about the potential MK9 uh, reveal. So get your clown emojis. Get them ready. The more I think about it, the, the the more I realize that there's a lot of good reasons to actually think about it. Or like a lot of good reasons to believe that MK9 is actually something that could be revealed tomorrow. And I keep thinking about it. Being like, it makes so much sense. It makes total sense. But every time I think of something more, like, like every time I think of another reason why like I actually think it's likely, all I can think about is that meme format where the clown is putting his put, is putting his makeup on, putting on the hat? Get, it, it, you know, you get deeper and deeper into the cycle, and that's all I'm thinking about. Whenever I have a new reason, the number one reason, which is the least convincing reason, is that there's been little to no work on 8D after it came out. Like they had like the Mercedes stuff. They had that random update that we don't know what it actually did. Like they, they 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 fiddled around with the items in 2017, but that was about it. And from what I remember, they said that they were actually going to update the game, and they have not really done that. So it makes me think that they have to be working on something else, because this is just how they operate. They start working on stuff like really soon after. Uh, they, they they start working on stuff pretty much the second like their their game comes out. So it's it's been long enough. We all know that. We all know that it's been long enough. That doesn't mean it's going to happen, but I'm pretty sure like it's entirely possible that they finish an MK game and they just sit on it because they don't feel like it's needed. Secondly, let's talk about the evergreen argument. There's a lot of, we talked about this. We talked about this last week. There's a lot of people that are like, Oh, they don't need to make a new one because AD is already selling. Now I still think that this argument's con like there there's some validity to it, but at the same time it's kind of a ridiculous notion that they wouldn't make a new game for extra sales. Because here's the thing, as we mentioned, there's gonna be people that rebuy MK on the Switch. There's a lot of people that would buy two of them. There's a lot of people that hit eight on the Wii U and did not buy Deluxe that would buy a new one. Now I don't know what percentage it is, but I would re- I would guess it's probably about twenty five percent of AD owners would I well. I would guess that 25% of AD owners would buy MK9. I think that I think that's a conservative estimate. At least 20%. And if you got a game that sold 35 million copies, if in 20% of them will rebuy it, that's still 7 million sales that you would not get if you didn't make MK9. 7 million sales is a wildly successful game. They they put out DLC for $15, two packs on the Wii U. And that made them a lot of money, I would imagine. Probably more than most Wii U games made them. And it was a value deal. Everybody liked the DLC in 8U. Everybody liked it. But, guess what? They haven't done that for 8D, and they really easily could have. And if they did it, you have an install base of like 35 million people who have the game already. So it's kind of like, well, this is free money that they could make by just adding a few characters which we now know is very easy for them to do. Just look at MKT. As well as like 16 new tracks. 16 new tracks and you probably get like half the people who have the game buying $15 DLC. That's massive profits. That's probably more money than most Switch games will make, even the wildly successful successful ones. There has to be a reason why they wouldn't. Because it's free money for the taking. Because, you know... You could say like, oh, MKAD is evergreen and stuff, but one know it's also one know it builds on the whole evergreen thing, DLC where the people already have the game and have been begging for new tracks and stuff. The only conclusion I would think is that they have to have something different that they've been developing for MK. Anyway, the third thing I want to talk about is Nintendo's history at E3. In 2013, they knocked it out of the park. Amazing games all across the board. Anyway, 2013, they announced Smash 4, I think, MK8, and Mario 3D World all in the same direct. That's like three reveals that are heavy hitters. And they still had a lot of other good games in there. So I was like, damn, is this what it is every year? Just like announce all the big titles. Then in 2014, they their, their, final, their final announcement, the wait for it announcement was Splatoon. Which at the time was like definitely the big announcement of E3 2014. But 
the thing was about Splatoon is like that that was like the one more thing, you know, at the end they're like, wait a minute, we got one more hype announcement. That's how the, it's like a show to them. That's how they do it. They had they, they they had that at the very end, and that was a big reveal. But you know, the thing is, is games like that are risky because you don't know how they're going to perform. Because, you know, they tried to do arms very similar to Splatoon and how they marketed it. Uh a lot of similarities between Splatoon and ARMS, but ARMS did not do great. I think I will, T, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Splatoon, however, was a home run. Definitely one of their best IPs now. But they didn't know that at the time. So they made sure that at E3 2014, they also announced Breath of the Wild, even though it was not even close to being finished. Because they had to have one big hitter that was revealed that people were going to be guaranteed to be getting excited about. So they had two... Big announcements, two, just one hand. And one was a Zelda, pre-established franchise, and one was Splatoon, new franchise. This makes me think that they always want to have at least one big announcement that's like a surefire guarantee. Now, 2015 was awful. They had two great years before it. They had the Star Fox Zero thing, and they definitely went hard on that. Around this time, there was a lot of... uh. I guess, adversity with the company because, you know, Iwata was sick at the time. God bless that man. But they did the puppets thing because it just wasn't going to work that year. And they had that really cool Star Fox Zero reveal. And that got people excited because it was Star Fox and stuff. But looking back, that was the only big thing and the game ended up not really being good. So 2015 was kind of a wash. But they still kind of hyped up Star Fox as like this title that was guaranteed to generate hype and it did for a little bit but then we kind of learned that wasn't really good and then 2016 e3 just didn't really happen for nintendo and then 2017 they kind of went they they they're like okay we sucked the last few years we kind of have to go in now the thing about uh that was uh they that the switch had just come out so they had to announce like there was arms mario odyssey uh what else splatoon etc but they made sure to have some Announcements that would generate excitement, and that came in the form of a Metroid Prime 4.png file, and uh, saying that Pokemon would happen. So they still had their new announcements, even if they didn't really show anything substantial for it. And then in 2018, that was the year of Smash, and then last year, they made sure to end up Breath of the Wild 2. So the point I'm making is, again, they didn't have anything last year also because of COVID. So the point I'm making is... I think it's pretty safe to say that they want one title, at least, that they can announce a new game for every single year. That's going to be a guaranteed hit that people are going to be excited about, but they play it safe. And I was thinking about what that could be this year, trying to think of everything here. And it hit me that there may not be a ton of uh, good options for it outside of MK9. Because... So think of all their big titles. Breath of the Wild 2, 2019. That's already been talked about. So the, the thing is, is like, yeah, they're going to have stuff like Breath of the Wild 2. But that's not like a reveal. Like, we already know it exists. So yeah, Breath of the Wild 2, which is obviously the Zelda thing. You have Metro- Metroid Prime 4, which has been in development forever. They can't really announce that again. Animal Crossing was last year, I think. I don't think that there's going to be a new one. Smash is definitely not happening, as we know. There's no way it does happen, because we're already talking about Ultimate DLC still. I tried to think of like what else it could be. It could be Kirby, it could be DK, etc. Maybe even F-Zero or Pikmin. But I don't think that's enough, unless it's like all of them. I don't think that's enough to be like the big hitting title. And what what else is there? Oh yeah, Pokemon, we know the plans. It's, it's all Gen 4 stuff next year. And ARMS 2, ARMS failed enough that we know it's not going to be ARMS. Like, they may announce ARMS 2, legs if you will, but I don't think that's going to be their big hitting title. And Splatoon 3 has also been announced already, so it can't even be that. And if anything, Splatoon 3 proves that you can have a second game from the same thing. I've come to the conclusion that there's like two things that would be massive hype things that they could do. Three if you count the Switch Pro, but I don't think that's going to happen because they've talked about software. One thing that they could do is a 3D Mario title. That would that would get hype. And the second is MK9. And I'm trying to think of what else they could do that's not a new IP. There's a lot of avenues that they could go, but I think that wouldn't be like 
the big hitter. Like, it needs to be something bigger, I think. So, I feel like it's one of those two things. If you're talking about, like, a surprise announcement, the type. I think Kirby is guaranteed to happen, but I don't think that Kirby is going to be your final announcement. I don't think it's ever been. And the other thing, E3 2013. MK8 revealed. Super Mario 3D World's revealed. And they knocked that they did both of those together. And that wasn't even the big announcement then. It was Ultimate. So they've done a new Mario and MK before. So I'm thinking, what what is their what is their big announcement going to be? Maybe it's maybe it's a new 3D Mario and that's it. First announcement will definitely be Smash DLC. There's no way. I feel like I, f- I think what they're going to do is they're going to start off with Smash DLC. I mean, they're going to end with Smash DLC and then have a final announcement after the second de- Smash DLC. I think that's what's going to happen. 